and it will be het. Now, if it's completely like that, if it's completely both are dominant, it will just look normal. It will completely look normal because there's no recessives in there and it will not be able to pass down any kind of recessives because there's nothing in there. So even though these two would look completely like normal leopard geckos, one of them would be a carrier for the recessive trait, one of them would not be, and this one would be a visual uh, of that recessive trait. So that way you can kind of understand, you know, if you're doing a pairing, what would, what would, um, what you would get out of it based on the percentages. So now, really quickly also, is a lot of people, if they do some kind of recessive pairing, let's just say they pair an eclipse to an eclipse. So you will do ease, okay, for this time. So because eclipse is recessive as well, you know, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, eclipse, eclipse, right? It's got the two recessives, visual eclipse, visual eclipse, that would be the pairing. So super simple. 100% have that phenotype or that genotype. Um, genotype is just what the gene is. So if you have a albino leopard gecko, right? Let's just say this is albino, right? Albino leopard gecko right here. You, let's say the E's stand for albino instead of uh, eclipse for just for now. Let's just say that's albino. This would be its genotype, right? EE, -E, right here. Genotype would be EE -E because those are the recessives that it carries. And this would be its phenotype. Its phenotype is what it looks like. So it is what the genes express and what the genes show. So its, it's phenotype would just be like this, right? This is what it looks like. That's a leopard gecko, tremper, albino phenotype. So that's super easy to remember. So then if we just kind of do it like that, we know 100% of the offspring, if you have a recessive to a recessive pairing, so if you pair Tremper albino to Tremper albino, or Eclipse to Eclipse, you can know 100% of the babies will carry that if they both show it visually. So if you pair homozygous recessives to homozygous recessives, you will get just more homozygous recessives and you will not be producing any hets. Because uh, if you produce hets, um, you can't, just by looking at it, you wouldn't tell that it does carry any kind of recessive gene, but the only way to figure out that would be test breeding. Um, but because we know how genetics work, and because we can use a Punnett square to understand the probabilities of our animals that we're going to be producing, we can actually know what we're going to be getting from the pairing, and we're going to understand what it means um, with these letters and using them and understand what uh, the probability is that we're going to get a, uh, a certain recessive morph or if we're not. So if you pair recessive to recessive like that, you're just going to get 100% recessive babies, which is great. So, you know, if you want to spend a couple extra dollars instead of buying a het, you can buy just a visual recessive, which are obviously pretty cheap if you were talking about eclipses, um, you know, low end eclipses or normal quality eclipses. So that is how the rece recessive genes work. Um, I will do another video talking about multi-recessive animals, so stuff like raptors, which are eclipse and tremper albino, or even stuff like white knights, which are bell albino, eclipse, um, and blizzards. So uh, a lot of genetic recessive combos in there. Now, re really quickly, we're going to go over dominance and co-dominance. So pretty much a dominant gene like I already wrote here, right? If something has a capital letter, it is dominant or co-dom. And that means that it will show it. So it only needs one, only one allele to display on animal. So it only needs that one to display on the animal, if that makes sense. So it only needs this for the animal to look this certain way. So let's just take a co-dominant gene, uh, for example, Max Snow, okay? So let's say Max Snow, we'll just use, I don't know, S's, okay? So this would be what it would look like for a Max Snow. It only needs this one capital S, if for, for being dominant, it only needs this capital S to display. So this would be a visual Max Snow. It would look like a Max Snow, it would be visual, and that way you could just tell um, by looking at it. And if something obviously does not look like it has any dominant genes, or it doesn't look like it has 
um, any co-dominant genes in it, then simply it doesn't have those in them. So by looking at an animal, you can tell immediately if it has, you know, Max Snow, Super Snow, Gem Snow, whatever, any of those, white and yellow in them, Enigma, just by looking at them. But the thing with uh, recessives is that because they can be heterozygous and because they care, can carry in an animal visually, or, or they can carry in an animal not visually, um, as opposed to visually, which uh, the dominants do, there's no way to tell, so that's why people do test breeding. You've probably also heard of test breeding before. That's so that you can make sure um, to prove out if an animal actually carries a certain gene or not. So, uh, you know, if something if something is sold as 50% possible het albino, you're going to want to do some test breeding to see if it actually is het or not, because there's absolutely no way to tell if it carries that recessive, you know, if it carries that, because it does not show it visually. So then if we have something like this, right, um, we can do another square. Can you guys see that? Okay, good. And we do a max snow, right? SS. Um, oops. Double the letters in there, too many letters. So capital S, lowercase s. And by the way, this lowercase s doesn't really mean anything. It's kind of just the other gene that's there. It's not really recessive. It's just kind of there, um, if that makes sense. So, um, Essentially, it's just pretty much like what it would look like for normal. So let's just say that it's, um, let's say instead of doing two capital S's, we could do an S and like, I don't know, an N, okay? So for normal, so if an animal is normal. So that means that from this pairing, we got this, SS, SN, SN, and NN. So from that, we can see right off the bat that what we get is we get 25% SS, 50% SN and 25% NN. So let's go off the, let's go about the NN first. NN would just mean normal. It means that the animal would just display itself as a normal animal. It would just display itself as a completely normal gecko. It would look completely normal um, unless it had any other recessives in this in this pairing. You, we wouldn't know that, but by looking at this, we know it would not have the max no gene at all in it. Okay. So the normal it is it is the normal gene is dominant over a recessive. So if you have one allele that's normal for a leopard gecko and one allele that's recessive, you put them together. Obviously, the animal's not going to show itself as a recessive, so it'll be heterozygous. But that normal um, the normal leopard gecko look is dominant because if you pair a normal leopard gecko to a recessive leopard gecko to you know a gecko that's uh, recessive let's say normal to Tremper albino, because the normal only needs one allele to display itself, you'll be producing completely het or heterozygous albinos, so non-visual albinos. So with this, we're going to be completely getting normal leopard geckos. So these would just be normals. Boom, normals. Cross that out, all done with that. SN. This would be the same as the parents. So 50% of them will be the same as the parents. So they will be max snows. So that means that right here, these two pairings, right, they came down, the letters came down, you could figure it out by dragging down the letters and seeing how it goes. So this, but the thing is, because the codominant, okay, the codominant means that it's like a little, it's more dominant of, of a dominant gene, okay? So if, if, uh, if a gene like the normal leopard gecko is present, um, if a codominant gene is there or another dominant gene is there, it will cover that, essentially. Think about it like that. It will be there in presence of the other one. So it will be, the S will be displaying itself and the N won't be. So you won't be seeing a normal leopard gecko, you'll be seeing a max snow leopard gecko because it is displaying itself ahead of this one. It is before it, it's more important than it, you'll see it first. Um, that's also another way you can go about this. So back, uh, looking back to, you know, uh, right here if we were to do, oh, a, a heterozygous albino, right? carries the gene for albino. Think about it in the order that you write it is what displays itself first. Um, that really helps uh, helps uh, visualize it for someone who's trying to learn, um, probably like you watching or someone who's just reviewing this video. Um, you can see that this would display itself before this one. So the normal look, because this is here, the dominant is there, it would just display itself first. So displays first. And then this one would be displayed second, which it's not. It's being covered up. So by this one, the snow, the max snow gene will kind of cover up the normal leopard gecko look. 
Now what you're thinking right here is 25% SS. Well, what's that? What's the SS? You can't have a double max snow. Well, actually you can, and it's called a super snow. So this is kind of what people call the super form. Uh, it's called that in ball pythons too. You know, there can be, I don't know. I'm not a ball python expert. Super Mojaves, I don't know if that's a thing. Whatever, super, um, super orange dream, super yellow belly, stuff like that. Um, but in leopard geckos, there's super max super snows. So we just call them super snows instead of max new super snows. So this is when you can see the genotype is that there are two max snow genes. So when there are two of those and they're both co-dominant, those pretty much work together as a recessive and there needs to be two of those alleles present, the two dominant alleles present that display max snow. So when you put the two alleles that display max snow together, what you get is a super snow leopard gecko and a super snow leopard gecko looks different than a max snow because it does have um, double, it, you know, it does have double the gene, pretty much double the dominant trait that makes it look <clears throat> a little bit different. And so now you can see same, right, same percent chance if we were to be doing a dominant pairing versus like a, a heterozygous pairing. So you can see that a quarter of them will be super snows. And then if we were to go over here, right, it's the same, like I said, it's very similar to the way that recessive works when it's a co-dominant. So if we have this, right, super snow to suit to a max snow, right, to max snow normal. Because these both pass down 100% of the time, because there's two alleles now, they'll both be passing down to 100% of the babies. So in every single baby will get this and it will come down here. It's pretty much acting as a recessive because it were to be, if it were to be a recessive, right, if it were to be doing a recessive on this, Right, let's just say there's a completely normal leopard gecko and then a visual albino or something. 100% of the babies will be heads. Because 100% of these recessives pass down and 100% of these co-dominants pass down when they're in their super form, or however you'd like to call it, when there's two um, co-dominant alleles present. So um, that's how you can pretty much understand it. Uh, but I really hope you guys just enjoyed this video and if it made sense to you, um, if it doesn't make sense, please comment where it didn't make sense uh, because, you know, this is a 26 minute video and uh, obviously there's a lot of writing, a lot of time. Um, I just took it to explaining how this works. I did repeat some stuff just to make sure that you guys really understand this because if you're considering leopard gecko breeding or if you want to know more about leopard gecko genetics, it's really important to get this stuff down. So uh, also, if you're a leopard gecko breeder who already knows this stuff, let me know if I did a good job of explaining it. Um, because I tried my best to just come up with all this stuff on the spot. But uh, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time.